Lauren. Um, Thanks for coming. It's great to see all of you. This is such a big crowd, and I'm so pleased to be here with all of you this morning. Um, thank you for the warm welcome. I wanted to start off by sharing this. Uh, it's a zoomed-in part of a broadside that I made about 10 years ago. Um, so you're just seeing a part of it, but this is letter set and printed on letterpress printing machines. And in a little while, you're gonna see a scroll through of some images of me working in my studio, so you see how some of this is done. Um, when I was invited to come talk at this, uh, at this creative morning, I was like, you know, I'm a big fan of Reverie, but I don't know if I have anything to say about it. And I hear silence on the other end of the phone, and I'm like, well, hold on a minute. Maybe I don't know what reverie really is. <laughs> and it turns out I was wrong, and I'm hoping maybe some of you are wrong too. Um, because I have been thinking all these years, in all this time, this is hanging on my wall, I thought of reverie as like a celebration of life, a joyful kind of um, celebration. That's not what it means at all. It's actually like being in a state of daydreaming, getting lost in thought, which suddenly makes this totally different, right? And I even love it even more. And as soon as I realized I'd been wrong, I kind of jumped in my seat and I said, wait, this is exactly how I make my work. This is exactly how I approach my creative process. Justin was on the other end of the line and he said, I know, that's why we invited you. <laughs> so they know me well and they know me better than even I did. So this takes me to, um, my husband comes home one day and he says, I learned a new word today and you need to know this word because this is all about who you are and this is you. And the word is Herkel Durkel. Does anyone else know Herkel Durkel? <laughs> Nobody, really? It's a new word. Oh, I see one person. It is such a great word. If you leave with nothing else today other than this new vocabulary word, this is what I want you to remember. Herkel Durkel. It's an old Scottish word from like early 1800s. I think a herk is like originally something about a ship, but it evolved to mean lolling around in bed after you wake up instead of getting up. So now we know, right? We all do it. Now you have a word for it to herkle durkle. And my husband Scott was so excited because he was like, there's a word for this thing that you love to do. Now I know. And so I think about how, um, yeah, this is one of my favorite parts of the day. Because I wake up, I still have a little bit of that dream that's left over, that's floating around my head. I'm thinking about stuff that I need to do today. I'm also remembering all, some of the things that I forgot, and they start to get mixed up together in a way that maybe doesn't quite make much sense. But it ends up being something really interesting and unusual, and then my brain just goes into these different places that it doesn't when I'm off to work or in my car or you know doing the things that I need to get done during the day. If you haven't tried this, I highly suggest that you try it, but also to do it without your phone. I know we herkle durkle with the phone, right? <laughs> Put it down and just stare at the ceiling, stare at the blinds, and it's amazing where your mind will take you for a little while. It's a great way to start the day. And this to me is sort of an example of sort of like a traditional sense of how you might want to daydream. You're sort of staring off into space, you've got no distractions, you're letting your mind wander. So it might be like in a hammock in the backyard, you might find a nice rocking chair, look at a nice view, maybe you're sitting on the beach, and you're taking the time to clear your mind and um, be in the present, right? And you're maybe watching the clouds drift by and your brain lets it sort of uh, float in and out. Some of these thoughts go floating in and out. This is daydreaming that we all know. You all do it, you all know it. I don't really have much else to say about that. So that's it, traditional daydreaming. I'm actually gonna talk about a kind of a different kind of daydreaming today. Something that is sort of like, um, I almost feel bad putting two, these two words together because they don't fit, but it's like a productive daydreaming, like an effective kind of daydreaming, and this is really how I've come up with my best work. I have a lot of variety of work that I go through, and if you look at my prints, the ones that are really, that seem to touch people and reach most people are the ones that I've let simmer in this very productive daydreaming kind of way. And for that, 
I want to introduce my yo-yo. <laughs> you don't really see these much anymore. We talked about this last night when I pulled it out. My husband and I were like, you know, kids don't really play with yo-yos these days. My son Milo tried it the other night. It's pretty tough. This is a hefty yo-yo. It's wood. It has a good weight to it. I have had this yo-yo for 30 years. And this is all I can do. I can make it go down and I can make it go up. <laughs> I have no tricks to show you. I can make it go down. I can make it go up after 30 years of working this yo-yo. This is actually not my yo-yo. My brother, who was three years older than me, left for college. And I was snooping around in his room after he left in the way that I'm not supposed to be. But I found this sitting on his desk and I picked it up and it has this great weight. It feels so good. And I noticed that when I threw this yo-yo for a while, it was like a stress relief. And I was a super stressed out high school kid. So I needed something that felt like a stress relief. So I used this after he was gone as my stress relief yo-yo. When I left for college, I took it with me because college is stressful. You're going to need something to relieve that stress. And then when I went to grad school, I took it with me there too. And I kept using it. Every time I got stressed out, I pulled this out to relieve that. While I was in grad school, I went to school at a, a, a big university in a tiny little town. It's University of Iowa in the town of Iowa City. And the great thing about being there was everything was within walking distance. So the, I lived in an apartment in town. I could walk to all my classes. I worked at the university library. I could walk there. I could walk to the grocery store, uh, post office, anywhere I needed to go. So I was walking and walking and noticed a lot of my friends were riding bikes. And I was like, maybe I should get a bike. They're getting everywhere a lot faster. So I got a bike and started riding to school in the morning. And I noticed when I got to school that um, I didn't have my thoughts in order. And I didn't have like the, the great ideas that I was having that I did when I was walking. And I realized that that walking period is about 20 to 30 minutes walk every morning. That was the time when I sorted all of my thoughts and sort of made sense of things that maybe I couldn't quite make sense of. And by the time I got to school at 8.30, I was really ready for the day and I had everything put in place and I had some great ideas I was ready to run with. And what happened was the bike, I got there too fast. I didn't have time to actually think through all that. So I put my bike away for a while. Even had a friend ask me if it was broken, if I needed her to help me like fix it or something. And I was like, no, I'm just getting to places too fast. And she was like, really? On a bike? Too fast? I was like, yeah, actually, on a bike. I was too fast. So I'm going to walk for a while. And during these walks, I started carrying a voice recorder. And I started to record my thoughts as I was organizing all of them and all my great world-changing ideas. And after about four years of this, I managed to collect a huge amount of audio. And my thesis advisor was kind enough to let me turn that in. After some editing and organizing, I turned it in as an audio thesis. So that was my master's thesis, was all of those recordings that I made on my walks back and forth every day. And yeah, yeah. And so it was, it was really, um, it was really helpful to go on a walk. And you guys know this, right? You probably heard this before, that if you're stressed out, if you're stuck on something, go for a walk. This is another way that we know we can relieve our stress is to go for a walk, do something kind of active, work in the garden, um, and even some cases wash the dishes or do the laundry. I have a friend who calls it cleaning. What did he say? Oh, sweeping for sanity is what he told me he was called. And I used to get on my own case about like procrastinating. Some of us think of it as procrastination. You have a deadline and suddenly your house is like cleaner than it's ever been before. And I realized that I was doing some of this because it's a way of me to clear my head while I'm working. Now, while I was in grad school, it's the perfect timing for me to learn about this. I was listening to some podcast, and I don't remember all the details about this, but the elements of it that stuck were, there is a part of our brain that is the logic, thinking, reasoning brain that keeps us you know, doing the things that we should be doing everything in the right order, everything in its place, right? And when you sit down at your desk and you have a white sheet of paper and you've got to think about what that project is next, 
it gets a little bit daunting, right? And you get stuck and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. And that's when you go do the laundry. <laughs> well, it's not procrastination. There's actually a thing that happens when you activate that thinking brain and you give it like something to do. It releases this hold on the creative brain in a way that lets it run loose. So that's why when you're in the shower, your brain has to think about shampoo first, rinse, then conditioner. Like you have to think about all that stuff. But you go on autopilot, and that's when your creative brain gets all those amazing ideas. And that's when you sort of like unleash the part of your brain that really solves your problems in a more creative way than your logical thinking brain. And this is why I think of this kind of daydreaming as in a way more effective than just like sitting in a porch swing and just staring off in the distance, which is great for meditation and relaxing and clearing the mind, but you don't actually want to clear the mind for like some of the best daydreaming. You actually want to keep it busy, keep it engaged with something else that will sort of set it on autopilot. It will release um, its grip on telling you what you should be doing and what you should be thinking, and you sort of let that creative brain do some of that, um, really what it does best, which is to just get creative. That brings me back to my yo-yo. So the stress relief yo-yo that I've been carrying around all these years, I realized wasn't relieving my stress. It kind of did, but what I would do is I would pace around, and I still do this now, I pace around in my studio, my brain is thinking about how to keep this yo-yo going up and down, which lets my creative brain do its thinking. And once I solve some of those solutions that were stressing me out, I'm feeling better. So my stress is relieved. But now I know to always keep this nearby in my desk, in my studio, because maybe there isn't always a good time for me to go for a walk. It might be raining, it might be cold. Maybe I've already done the dishes. Or maybe I know if I start cleaning up, you guys have probably done this too, I start cleaning one thing, I start cleaning another thing, and before you know it, you're like painting the house, right? It's like three days later and you're still cleaning. So I wanna stay in the studio, I wanna get the stuff done that I need to get done. I pick up my yo-yo and you'll probably, if you come around and see me, you'll see me pacing around thinking about using a yo-yo and letting my other brain do its best work. So I wanted to thank you guys for coming today and spending this Friday morning with me. I also wanted to say a quick thanks to Justin and Brandy and the whole Creative Mornings team for having me, inviting me here and having this. Um, also thanks for Citizen Vinyl for hosting us. And I really appreciate all of you coming out. So thank you.